we shout glory. Come on, give the Lord a praise. We praise you, Jesus. Come on, somebody shout to the king. Shout hallelujah. Come on. Hey. Has anybody been set free tonight? Hey. Come on, sing it tonight. Say chains are broken. And chains are broken. Because you have spoken. And it is finished. On the cross, now I'm living in your freedom, and Jesus, you have set me sing oh. Israel for this purpose, for this purpose, I am living because Jesus, you have set me. Free. Come on, say nothing's gonna hold, nothing's gonna hold me back. We say that nothing's gonna keep me down. Jesus has set me free, and I'm free in King. And I will, I will give you praise with everything I have. By your goodness, I'm covered by your grace. I am covered by your grace. Hey. My heart is grateful, forever thankful. Cause Jesus, you have set me. Somebody free. declared nothing's gonna hold. Nothing's gonna hold me back. Hey, no, nothing's gonna keep me down. Jesus has set me free, and I'm free. Have you been set free tonight, church? We are free and free indeed. Hey, yeah. Come on, declare it tonight. Everybody sing, we are free. We are free. We are free. And we have.
Come on, I know it's Sunday night, but I think God can get a bigger praise than that tonight. Can you give the Lord a shout? Come on. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for freedom. Father, we thank you for freedom tonight. And we came to worship the King of Kings. Come on, I want you to turn your praise into worship. Lift those hands to the King. Tell him how good he is. Tell him how, how, how awesome he is. How faithful he's been. We praise your name. Deserve the glory tonight. Lift your hands, sing all the saints and all the angels. All the saints and angels. They bow before, bow before your throne. And all the elders, all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God. You are worthy, say, you are worthy of it all. Yes, you are, say, you are worthy of it all. Yeah. And far from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it again, you are worthy. Come on, from the front to the back, lift your hands and worship the King tonight. Lift your voice, hey. We praise your name. Only you are worthy, Lord. There's nobody like my God. No one can compare to his greatness. He is good. He is merciful. some praise. Come on, it's Sunday night. I'm ready, y'all. Give me some music. I'm ready. Go to clapping your hands, everybody. 
Where all my praises at? Y'all coming back down here? I said, are y'all coming back down there with me? Let's go. Here we go. When I was down and helpless, lifted me up. I couldn't find my way. Lord, you're greater beyond. Clap your hands. Let's go. So I will praise you louder. Lifting my voice. Tell of your goodness and power. Make a joyful noise. Yes, you are the world. Here we go. Say up, up, up. You lift me up. Let's go. Up, up, up. You lift me up. Let me hear you. Up, up. Clap your hands. You ready? Say higher. Everybody say. Higher. Say higher. Make some noise. Thank you for giving me goodness. Saving me from destruction. I will worship. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. So I'll praise you louder. Tell of your goodness and power. Yes, you are the world. I need all my praises. Let's go. Say. Let's go. Come on, it's Sunday night. A little louder. Say higher. higher. Anybody want to go higher? higher? Let's go higher. higher. Let's higher. higher. Say this with me. Hey, through the storm, through the storm and, the rain, and the rain, every day, every day I, will sing I will sing of your love of and your mercy, your mercy and, your and your grace. Oh. Say up, say up, 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 you lift me up, 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 you lift me up, 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 you lift me up, 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 Here we go. Say higher. Higher. Come on, victory. Clap those hands. Let's go. Higher. Clap your hands. Higher. Ah, ah, ah. Higher. Come on. Say higher. Make some noise for Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a shout of praise in this house. I'm ready. Keep going. Clap your hands like this, everybody. Some of you need to get out of your seat. Bring your track up a little bit. Bring the track up. A little more track. Bring it up. You should know this song. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound, not up here, that saved a wretch like me. I once in the house was a lost more track, but now I'm found. Was blind, but with me. T'was great that taught, that taught my, heart my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. 
How precious did that grace appear the hour I first. Here we go. Oh, you got it? Say, oh. Last verse. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead. Let's go. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace that was shed upon us. For without your grace, where would we be? Say with me, say this. It's amazing, so amazing. It's amazing. Shout grace. Say. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, amazing. so amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. say grace, say, grace. somebody make some noise. Let me tell you this, the most incredible thing you can understand about your life as a Christian today is the power of the grace of God. Grace gives you the strength to praise God when you ain't got no strength. Grace gives you the, the joy that you need when there's nothing to be joyous about. And sometimes you got to activate that thing within you. The Bible says stir up the gift. Sometimes you got to stir up the gift that's inside of you so that that joy can be released in the atmosphere. And can I tell you, it can be contagious if you're not careful. Go to clap your hands like this. Uh, uh, it's the make, run the key, no, wait, run the key. That's the key. Sing so amazing. It's amazing. Y'all say that with me. It's amazing. So amazing. It's amazing. Shout grace. Hey. It's amazing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Are y'all shouting? Oh. Hey. Uh huh. Shout grace. grace. All right, hold on. All right, now that's good. Now you were clapping, but now see, that's a, that's a safe place to be. But I wonder if I got any people that will take another step of faith and put a little dance with that clap. Because some of y'all are being cute with it. And I notice you're standing behind your chairs in the safe zone. But do me a favor. Get one dancing partner. Get, take, somebody, take your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor. Come on, say, I know you feel funny right now. No, don't do a whole group. No, just two people. Come on, don't be safe. Come on. It's Sunday night. Let me ask you, Victory, has God been good to you? Come on, has God ever healed your body? Amen. So don't be cute with your praise. This is the time to celebrate. It's amazing, all right? So when I count to three, I want you to dance before the Lord like David. One, two, three, say. Hey, say, come on. Ah, ah, y'all not dancing. Let's go. Gotta move. Great. 
It's a man. It's a man. So a man. Praise. It's a man. A man. It's a man. Praise. Say grace. Oh grace. Oh grace. Oh grace. Grace that heals. Grace that delivers. Grace that breaks the chain. Grace. Say grace. 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 Grace brought me out. Grace brought me through. I'm here today because of his grace. Say grace. Oh, grace. Oh, grace. Somebody make some noise. Without the music. Come on, Victory. Hey, hey. One, two, it's a mess. It's amazing. Uh. So amazing. Hey. It's amazing. Grace, hey. Oh. It's amazing. Hey. So amazing. Hey. It's amazing. Grace. Grace. One more time. So, uh, oh, grace, come on. Come on, give God praise for grace today. I'm ready. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give him glory. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your anointing. God, we give you all the glory, all the praise. It's a simple song that says this. Grace. You gave me grace, grace beyond measure, grace with much favor. You gave me grace, unlimited grace. I live for your glory, strength for my story, unmerited grace. You gave me grace, grace beyond measure. Grace beyond Grace with much favor. You gave me grace. Unlimited grace. I live for your glory. Strength for my story. Unmerited grace. I love this part right here. Oh, I would be lost without you. Say with me. Oh, I would be lost without you. Not much more. Not much I could have gone through if it had not been for your grace. Not been for your grace. I wouldn't be here. This very day. This very day. You got it? Come on, say grace. You gave me grace. Grace beyond measure. Grace with much favor. I merit it. So much I live for your glory Strength for my story A merited grace Come on, wave your hands, let's say it again Oh, I would be lost without you, say Oh, I would be lost Not much more I could have gone through If it had not been for your grace, I wouldn't be here this very day. Say it again. Oh, I would be lost. Oh, I would be lost. Not much more. I could have gone through if it had not been. Oh, for your grace, I wouldn't be here. This very day. You know, Paul prayed that prayer and he said to God, can you take this thorn from my side? But God said back to him, son, my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever you're going through tonight, I'm telling you, God's grace is sufficient. 
if you need healing in your body just begin to lift up your hands and say I receive it if you need breakthrough in your home just begin to say grace come on just begin to declare it and begin to decree it over your family God's grace can break every chain God's grace can open every door there's nothing too hard for God's grace come on lift your voice say come on say grace say grace come on grace somebody shout grace lift your voice say grace amazing I thank God grace that delivers grace that heals yeah so much grace oh grace grace I thank you for your grace yeah somebody just wave your hands just wave your hands just wave your hands grace you gave me grace grace beyond measure grace with much favor you gave me grace a limited grace i live for your glory strength for my soul a merited grace you gave me grace grace beyond measure grace with much faith you gave me you gave me so much unlimited grace I live for your glory strength for my story you gave me grace hopefully it's good all right so so when something jumps out at you I want you to tweet it or post it include me in it at Javen online okay at Javen online and uh and then we'll retweet and that's that's the way we witness you know back in the day you have to uh, you have to pass out tracks you remember tracks y'all don't know about no tracks you have the tracks, you have to go pop them tracks, put them in people's hands. These days, all you got to do is do a post, a little tweet, you know, and that's, that's witnessing. Amen? So don't hold back on the wisdom of God. Be sure to include it. Um, also, we're going to remind you, uh, Now Church is doing strong and well. Please continue to pray for the Now Church. We're in Fort Lauderdale. That's on the east-south side of Florida, okay, between uh, just above Miami. So that's where we are. And anybody down there, if you're ever coming down there, come hang out with us at the Now Church. I promise you. It'll bless you real good. And then I want to just acknowledge one more time, uh, Pastor uh, Al and Georgina, and I want to make sure we're respectful to them. And this is their house. I love them to death. I thank God for what they're doing. Let's clap our hands for them. Pastor Al, for Aldo, just for everybody. Come on, let's clap our hands for the leadership. We thank God for them. Amen? All right, real quick, I'm just going to rehash this morning. We first talked about joy, and we said that when God lives in you, joy comes naturally. We also told you that real joy doesn't need something to happen. Real joy makes things happy. Then we gave you three keys of what joy is all about. Number one, real joy is produced from grace challenge by negative opposition. Number two, you can't have real joy if you don't have hope. We talked to you about the importance of having hope in God. And then finally, number three, if you reject joy in your life, you accept defeat in your life because joy is what brings strength and brings life to you. Now I want to talk to you briefly about what it means to have the peace of God. Because when you, start, when you start looking at your life, especially the life of a Christian, we should not be full of stress. We should not be uh, full of anxiety. We should not be full of issues that burden us down and get us depressed. And one of the things that I think is so important for the believer to understand is that we are supposed to live and allow God to abide within us in our day, not just when days are good, but also when days are bad. Somebody say amen that we are supposed to have the peace of God no matter the situation. And the first wisdom key I want to give you today is this. People who have God have real peace. People who have God have real peace. You can always tell when you are far away or you're not really experiencing the, the joy of the Lord or the Spirit of God dwelling in your life because there's always seems to be some type of confusion going on. Come on, read your Bible. God is not the author of confusion. He's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, what? And a sound mind. It means a mind that is full of the peace of God. So let's talk uh, briefly about three ways to have real pe peace, and then we're going to pray. Now, y'all remember... 
I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and they used to have us in church all night. And uh, I said, if I ever have to pastor, I will not be uh, preaching to people all night. Amen? Y'all don't know nothing about that. <clears throat> bring your, bring the, uh, the, big, uh, the, the big pillow uh, from the bed. And then back in those days, they dressed you in onesies. <clears throat> so we'd literally be under in these little cushion chairs. See, y'all got it good. There's wooden benches. Uh, come on, somebody. But, you know, air conditioning, half of it didn't work. Amen. And then uh, in order to get some kind of cool there, you had to have a funeral fan. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It was either the local funeral home or Mahalia Jackson on there with the praying hands. <laughs> and you fan those. Uh, and, and people shouted. Y'all know what shouting is? People, people shouted and danced. And sometimes they danced right around your head, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. We didn't get kicked in the head all of them years. Anyways, three ways to have real peace. You ready? Say, I'm ready. Write it down. Number one, choose now to stop practicing worry. Choose now to stop the practice of worry. God wants you to have true peace by having you not worry about everything. Believe it or not, worry is a sin. And again, it means that you don't trust God. When you worry about things, you're saying in your spirit, I don't trust God. God is not in control. But when we know that God is in control, we should not worry as believers. Amen? Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says this. It says, do not be anxious about anything. What is anything? Anything. Everything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. The word for anxious in the Greek means troubled with cares. Wisdom key number two for tonight. God does not give us assignments that we cannot carry out. Amen? God does not give us assignments that we carry out. You may not can deal with other people's children, but trust me when I can tell you, you can deal with your kids. Oh, Pastor, you don't know my children. <laughs> I don't have to know them. Those children have been assigned to you. You may can't uh, deal with other people's spouses. Come on, somebody. They may get on your nerve, but your spouse, I'm telling you, you got enough grace to deal with them. Now, I know some of y'all can't believe that, but that's the word of God, and it's true. Hallelujah. Stop making excuses about your boss. Stop making your boss out to be the devil. If God placed you at that job, then you got the grace to deal with that boss. Come on, give me a hey right there. He said to the man with the withered hand in Mark chapter 3, verse 5, stretch forth your hand. That man was handicapped. He did not physically have the ability to do it, but through faith, he stretched forth his hand, and the Bible says he was made whole. Sometimes what you got to do is answer God at the place that he calls you. Sometimes you got to be willing to do what he's called you to do, even when it seems impossible, that it's in your impossibilities that you will find the joy, the peace, and the strength that you need to endure. If you'll stop complaining about what you're dealing with and start saying, I got what it takes to deal with what I'm dealing with, you'll probably start seeing the water start going to calm. Somebody say, I have the peace of God. Wisdom key number three, I think we're on tonight, and that is this. Obedience represents faith in action. I love that. Obedience, when we are obedient to God, we are putting faith into action. We know what the word says about faith. Faith without works is what? Dead. So don't tell me you have faith when you're not obeying God. Don't tell me I have faith in God when God done told you to do something and you don't do it. We got to beg you to tithe. We got to beg you to give an offer. We got to beg you to clap your hands. We got to beg you to say amen. We got to beg you to come to church. I mean, nobody even called me today to come to church, so that's why I didn't come. Why we got to call you to come to a God that delivered yourself out of sin? I mean, we thank God for the TLC ministry or the tender love and care. I don't know what y'all call it. But nobody should have to call you every week for you to come and worship the God that's been so good to you. Somebody give me a hey or something right there. <laughs> Through the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that's impossible for you to do. All things are possible. Somebody say all things. Young people, if you're in school right now, let me tell you, all things are possible. Amen. 
I was getting my uh, BA degree in psychology and one of the things I had to take was Spanish, glory to God. <laughs> and I had to go to the second level of Spanish in order to, to, to pass. And so I, hey, go, hey, oye, gloria a Dios. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> poquito, poquito. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to take statistics and I, I said oh my come on somebody know what I'm talking about and I said man and, that, and that, that statistic teacher man I can't even say it that's how hard it was she had those glasses down there at the bottom of her nose like that I said I know she gonna fail me glory to God <laughs> grace God I need your grace but I sat on that front row and I took every note. I listened to everything she said. I never missed a class. I never slept in. I don't care. I never missed that statistics class. Glory to God. And because I didn't miss it, I actually passed the class with a B. I almost made an A in the class. I couldn't even believe it myself. I said, there is a God. What I'm trying to say to you is you got to grab a hold of faith and then when God tells you to do something, you got to go ahead and do it in the, in the face of adversity. Sometimes it would seem literally impossible to do what God is calling you to do it. But if you grab a hold of faith and do it anyway, you're going to see the miraculous take place in your life. You're looking at a young man that went on a one-way ticket to Tennessee to go to college that he did not have any tuition or anything paid for. But I can guarantee you that as, even as I signed up for the classes, and as I took every class, the last person I had to see was the registered person where you got to pay the money. And the lady said, how are you going to pay for the school? It's a true story. 17 years old, she said, how are you going to? God told me I was going to go to this Christian school. And there I was. And I, the lady said, how are you going to pay for it? I looked that lady in the face and said, my father's going to pay for it. Now, I don't care, encourage you to do that, but I'm just telling you my story. Hey, come on, give me a hey. I'm just telling you what, I, what, what God did. For, I grabbed the whole of faith. Because I was sick and tired of where I was. Come on, somebody. I knew that if I didn't take some drastic steps of faith, my life was going to go down and go down fast. See, some of, you th some of you think you're staying in one place. You're not staying in one place. There's no such thing. You're either moving forward or you're moving back. And the only thing that's stopping you from moving forward is fear and worry and stress. And what you need to do is be a man and a woman of faith. Even if you're 18 years old, 16 years old, it doesn't matter. 15 years old. I don't care if you're 55, 65. I don't care wherever you are. If you're still alive and you're still breathing, God says to you tonight, I am not through with you yet. Amen? Glory to God. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. 27 and then verses 30, 31 through 34 he says therefore I tell you do not worry this is Jesus talking about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear come on somebody y'all fashionistas it's not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes who of you by worrying can add I love it even Jesus was giving wisdom keys back in them days look at that who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life think about it he goes on to say in verse 31, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, whole lot of preaching there, and his righteousness and all these things. Somebody say all these things will be given to you. It'll be what? Given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, he said, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Somebody say, now is the time. The biggest mistakes most, pe most people make is they drag yesterday into today. It's a huge mistake. Some of y'all right now are dragging the issues from this morning into this service. I'm telling you, it happens. And it's very easy as a very natural thing to do. It's a very natural thing to drag your past into your present. Are you with me? And I'm going to tell you, the rest of, you know what you do with the rest, the, the other part of your, your brain, the other part of your life, you, 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 you drag in your, your, uh, your tomorrow into today. So now you done drag the mess from yesterday. <laughs> Are y'all glad y'all came to church tonight? <laughs> do I need to sing again? <laughs> so you drag the issues of yesterday, the last relationship, uh-huh, look straight ahead. <laughs> That last job. Some of you won't invest no more because last time you invested didn't go well. That's all right. Take a stab again. Amen. Ain't got no amens. Amen. 
Come on, we don't, we don't live in fear, amen? Yeah. Amen. That's how you move forward. You don't let one thing shoot you down and you don't do nothing no more. No, if you have one house and you lost it to foreclosure, that's all right. Get your credit back together. Go get your next house. I can't get a hey, nothing. I mean, you're going to sit in an apartment all your life? Come on. Come on, hey. And you don't need nobody to buy no house for you, ladies. Buy your own house. If you ain't married, that's all right. Go and get you. I knew the ladies. I knew the ladies going to get crunked on that. To the left, to the left, everything. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, oh yeah. Let's keep going. Point number two. Let me get out of here before I get in trouble. Point number two. <laughs> Praying with faith. Here's how you get peace. Praying with faith for a prosperous outcome brings peace. Praying with faith for a prosperous outcome brings peace. Anything that is an issue in your life, pray about it. And petition God about it. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 it says. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Going back to our text. With thanksgiving. Watch this. Let your requests be made known to God. Now you say pastor God already knows about it. Why do I have to tell him about it? Because he needs to know that you know that he can take care of it. Did you hear me? A lot of times we talk to everybody about our issues. Let me talk to my girlfriend. Let me talk to this person. Let me talk to that person. When was the last time you talked to God about that issue? And I know what a lot of us do. We come to the altar and we talk to God about the big issues. But I'm going to tell you something. When we pray tonight, I want you to talk to God about them simple, small issues. Talk to them, God, about your insecurities. God will fix that. Amen? Talk to God about your friend. The Bible says he that wants a friend must first show himself what? Friendly. So talk to God about whatever it is that's within you that can't cause yourself to be friendly to other people. It's the simple things that's taking Christian people down these days, I'm telling you. It's not the big sins. It's the little stuff. It's the little quiet sins that just sit up in your house like bacteria and that just wears you out spiritually. Taking your joy, taking your peace. You used to be the first one at the door as soon as the church opens. Now you don't even care to come to church. Doesn't even matter to you. You don't even recognize that it's Sunday no more. Sunday for a lot of us is Wednesday, it's Tuesday, it's all just running together. And the enemy is just robbing you of the very thing that Jesus died on the cross to give you. He said, I'll give you peace that goes beyond your understanding. You should not have the Holy Ghost and have a life full of stress. You should not have the Holy Ghost and have a life full of depression. You should have a life that is full of the peace of God. Where are the Christians that know how to smile? Where are the Christians that know how to give you a high five? Where are the Christians that won't pop an attitude with you the moment you say or do something they don't like? Where are the Christians that don't cuss people out when they cut you off on the road? Are we up in here tonight? What is the power of God if it doesn't work when you need it? I just ran around the church in my head. <laughs> what is the power of God if it doesn't work when you need it the most? Where is the peace of God when you are in trouble? Somebody say, keep going. The cross gives us access to the things of God. Write it down. The cross gives us access to to the things of God, which says we ought to give thanksgiving for all that he's done for us. And because we can get to God and we can get to his presence, when we are in his presence, there is peace. There is love. There is joy. Psalms chapter 16, verse 11, it says, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Never stop praying to God. Put your finger in your neighbor's face. <clears throat> Come on, God's going to use you right now. Tell your neighbor, say, never stop praying to God. Thank you, sir. Come on, say it again. Say, never stop praying to God. I'm one of 13 children. Can I tell you a secret? My mom would make us recite the Lord's Prayer and the Our Father's Prayer every morning on our way to school. 13 children. 
we had so many kids in our family, we didn't have them little mini. Y'all got them little nice cute SUVs and little minivans. Baby, my family wouldn't fit in none of that kind of stuff. They had to go get a 15 passenger van. Come on, somebody, glory to God. My dad was so sold out to the church, he took his van and put the church logo on the side. Come on, somebody. Now, we were the holy rollers, weren't we? <laughs> Park me on the side. I'll walk a block to the school. <laughs> <laughs> Drive me off here, mama. <laughs> no. <laughs> she pull that big old bus with a big old church logo on the side. And you be like, where y'all coming from? A charter school or something? I'm like, no, that's just our, that's just our van. But every day on our way to school, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I didn't even know anybody. I thought it was a nursery rhyme. <laughs> I did. Knew it by heart. But I knew because my mom was a praying mother. Every night before I, you know, if I went to say goodnight, go upstairs, say goodnight to my dad, my dad found my dad sleeping with the Bible on his, uh, on his chest, wrote, and, you know, he'd be up there sleeping. Many times I'd go in my mom's room, and, you know, I was the good child. I was the good child. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. I was the good one. <laughs> Many times I'd go in my mom's room, and I'd hear her wailing on her knees, find her on her knees just wailing out for one of my brothers or sisters or somebody uh, that wasn't doing quite right at that time. And then sometimes it was me. <laughs> but she'd be in there praying for her children. And ladies and gentlemen, when you pray, that's how you keep 13 children off the street, out of jail and out of a bunch of foolishness. Prayer changes things. I got to stay here just a little bit longer because I know people don't like you to talk about prayer because it's kind of boring or it's kind of seemed like it's not the more hip thing to do. But I need you to get back into the atmosphere and the attitude and the importance of what it means to go down that list of what you need God to do in your life. Some of you need to get needy. Some of you need to get greedy. Some of you need to get bold. Some of you need to talk, stop talking to Santa and start talking to Christ and let him know what you need. God, here I am. <laughs> I need you tonight. Amen? And when you get through talking to him, listen. It's a two-way conversation. Listen. Just about done. Number three, you have to practice. Come on, Chris. You have to practice peace. This is the kicker right here. You have to practice peace in order to have peace. This is the kicker. This is what I want you to take home and remember. If you don't remember nothing else, I'll tell you tonight. You have got to practice peace in order to have peace. You have to begin to meditate on the things that are holy. You have to allow your mind to be set free from the slavery of sin and let it be set free to the word of God that's over your life. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. In Romans chapter 8 verse 6 says the mind of sinful man is death. But the mind controlled, watch this, by the spirit is life and peace. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, excellence, worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Ladies and gentlemen, peace is a choice. Peace is a choice that you will have to make tonight. And I want some of you to begin to do that right now and say, this will be a peaceful week. Come on, say it. As you're getting ready to embark upon the holiday season, I want you to go ahead and declare, this will be a peaceful holiday. Come on, say it. Hallelujah. And let's go ahead and time travel. Is that all right? Let's go ahead and take care of 2017. Come on, somebody grab a hold of faith. Hallelujah. Come on, give me a hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let's go ahead and declare and let's say this 2017, say with me. Uh, Y'all playing with it. I need you to grab a hold of faith. There you go. We time traveling. Come on, say 2017 will be a peaceful year. Wave your hand, say from my home. Now let's practice peace right now. He said, Pastor, how do you practice peace? Well, I'll tell you one way you practice peace is you start focusing in on God and all of his beauty and all of his glory 
and you don't wait on nobody, but you just start doing stuff like saying, your good, good father is who you are, is who you are, is who you are, and I'm loved by it's who I am. Come on, let's practice. You're practicing. It's who I am. 